Welcome, friends, to another episode of Unlocked. It's the world's number one Xbox show. We're here at IGN another week. Plenty to talk about in the world of Xbox. Coming up on this week's show, uh, it's a big week for the Xbox Game Pass. It launched last year, but they've made a big new change to it that's uh, going to make it mighty, mighty hard to resist, we think. We're going to discuss that. Plus, uh, John Cena is attached to a Duke Nukem movie. That uh, should spawn some interesting discussion around here, I think. Peter Molyneux, the co-creator of Fable, chimes in on what he'd like to see from the new Fable that was, of course, unearthed last week, being made by Playground Games. Plus, uh, PUBG getting into some charitable functions within the game, raising some money. Uh, we'll talk about it's always good to do a good story there. So, a lot to get to. I'm Ryan McCaffrey. We've got Destin Legary. Hi, everybody. Alana Pierce. Hi. Marty Sleva. Whoa. Sea of Thieves. The beta, closed beta for now, mm -hmm. has launched. It is running through the weekend, I yeah. believe. Uh, has has I know it's just launched this morning. A lot of us haven't had a chance to jump in yet. Mm -hmm. But I am really happy to see a lot of other people. Not everybody, it's not an open beta, but I'm really happy to see a lot of people that... Uh, that have been that follow us that have been watching our coverage be able to play it themselves now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we saw we woke up this morning and it was the number one streaming game on Twitch. It passed uh, PUBG and LOL. Fifty thousand, almost double the audience of PUBG and Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Seems like such a good game to stream. Yeah. Um, I really hope that I get to do that sometime this week. Actually, but. Uh, I, yeah, it's, it's awesome to see more people getting involved in the amount of tweets that I'm seeing of people being like, holy crap, this game is so much fun. And it's like, you know, something we've been trying to explain for such a long yes. time that people finally getting to try it for themselves is super exciting. And it's, it's much prettier. I've been kind of like wishy-washy on the art style, but actually getting in there and playing, I'm like, oh, this is gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, the water's yeah. the same water used in Forza Horizon, funnily enough, as well. Mm -hmm. They actually use the same ocean. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. The, game, it looks, cool. yeah, the water looks it is? phenomenal. Wait, and where'd yeah. that come from? They told That's me the that. thing? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, it's one of those things where like the water does look like photorealistic, but I mm -hmm. feel like as the game has gone on, the sort of cartoony Pixar-esque art styles just become a little like stronger and stronger. Yes. Like, I really like it now. It just feels really kind of pronounced and, and it feels like Sea of Thieves. And, and it also feels like rare. I mean, I go back to the mm -hmm. very first Unveil trailer of that, which we're just watching some gameplay right now, yep. but the, the original Unveil trailer, like in three seconds, I was like, oh, that looks like a rare game. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it turned yeah. out to be a rare game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the, the closed beta is a sort of custom slice. It's by no means the entire game. Um, and what's cool, too, is seeing those Twitch numbers that you guys were just referencing. Th it's just the closed beta. You have to have a pre-order or have to have been in the Sea of Thieves Insider program mm -hmm. already. Yeah. So once it inevitably it hasn't been announced yet, but once that inevitable open beta oh, happens. So many more streams going on. So exactly. Yeah. So many more streams going we, on. We should actually address that. Some users are having problems signing on right now. It's right. been several hours at the time of this recording. Yeah. Uh, the community manager has reached out. They are working on it. But some people were pretty angry about that just because they're excited to play well, it. Well, and apparently but, uh, the cold Windows irony. Store. Yeah, the cold <laughs> irony is that Pre-orders from, if you pre-order from basically anywhere but the Xbox store work mm -hmm. fine. But if you went ahead and made your pre-order with blah. Microsoft themselves, yeah. you're having a little bit of an uh, issue. Yeah, the site's right now. down as well. But, you know, the, the thing with, with things like this is... What if that's what this flooded. is for. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to say. It's like that is the purpose of an open beta is to test this kind of thing and get them used to it before the game actually comes out. Yeah, yeah. and all those alphas, like, you know, they, they were adding more and more folks to each one. But clearly this is the largest amount of people who have ever tried to log on to this game at once. And yeah. so, yeah, that's going to happen. And yeah. that's what these are. Like you said, that's exactly what these are for. So... This happens now. I'm like, great, fix it. If it happens at launch, that's a problem. But if it happens now, right, it's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. and that's why I'm. I even though it, uh, an open beta has not been confirmed, I'm all but telling you there will be one because they're going to want to try to break the game again with as many people as possible, so that you don't have a really bad launch day yeah. that can tarnish your entire reputation yeah. Yeah. permanently. Yeah, but the people who are playing it, they seem to be having a good time. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed the short amount of time that I got to play it myself. Uh, like, I didn't want to play any of the closed ones because I couldn't talk about them. I'm like, I'd rather experience it when everybody else can. Yeah. And I can discuss that. Yeah, it's still, you know, solo. It, it's not, there. It, it's supported, but it's absolutely, in my opinion, not the way to go in this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, try to, if you're having, if you don't have any immediate online friends that, that you can play this with, anybody in your immediate social circle, maybe join the Unlocked Facebook group. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, you'll no doubt be able to find plenty of friendly gamers there 
who, yeah. uh, who you can crew up it's, with. It's also just uh, even if you're playing it without people that you actually know, because that happened to me majority of the time. I was playing mm -hmm. at weird hours or other people didn't have access to the alpha. Uh, I was playing with strangers and having an amazing time. Mm -hmm. So I think the community for this game is already incredible. Like maybe that'll change on launch because yeah, that I, happened. They like, have but, the LFG tool also. So Yeah, yeah I hope so because um, I could, I'm now just going to say this. I can't imagine I will get in trouble for it. But from the last alpha... I just thought, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into this. I haven't played it since E3, so it was like months and months before, and you know I didn't have anybody online, so I just jumped in mm -hmm. right away into matchmaking. Took took a minute, got in there. In three seconds, uh, I heard giggling over the microphones, <laughs> and then I was placed in the brig because <laughs> you can you can if if someone is being horrible, you know if they're if they are trolling, if they're not playing nicely, the you can do a majority vote to lock them in the brig. <laughs> and so they, you know, I don't know if these guys were high or what, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. that, was, that was literally the first thing that, that happened to me really when I got it. And I was like, well, <laughs> this is this, we're not off to a good start here. So that's when I, I logged off, went on Twitter and went, who wants to play with me in the oh, alpha right now? That. And then I had a good experience. Oh man. The worst uh, thing I had was that, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if this is still on any. I think it's probably You're not fine. now because everyone's playing it. But um, like multiple times because I was playing with the same people for about two hours, uh, I would like be on the island and then they would just leave without me in the boat. <laughs> and yeah. it just like became a running joke that they're like, see ya. And I'd like try and swim and catch up and like get bitten by a shark and just have to spawn back there and be like, Are you, again? Oh, <laughs> Seriously? I guess if, uh, I guess I would take my experience as a bit of feedback for Rare. And I, and we know <laughs> so Rare funny. listens. Mm -hmm. We know for a fact Rare <laughs> listens every week. Maybe uh, have some sort of t setting where you, you can't. <laughs> throw someone in the brig with, within the first like five minutes of them entering the game. Like there's has to be some sort of grace period so that theoretically you can't get trolled right off the I don't bat. know. I, I don't know. I find that pretty funny. Yeah. That's like, yeah, Thanks, Martin. That's like yeah. arresting a baby right after it's born. It's like, baby clearly didn't That's any also crimes. not funny. Ah, I mean, it's funny if it goes in like funny. baby jail, yeah. like, which is just a pen, I guess. Like, that's also a the crib break. is baby jail. put it on a ship yeah. and then it's on the brig. No, I think that's super hilarious. Oh, I mean, man. moderation tools and Sorry, stuff Ryan, like this funny. is very difficult. It's hard to figure Screen out how to do it correctly. Like, I think that GTA did an amazing job. I think that like the dump service is really good. That works really well. With this kind of thing, what if you wait five minutes and then someone is just awful, awful for, for five, five minutes, minutes and then you never want to play? I the mean, game that's again. fair. That's fair. I don't. I don't know. I guess I'm not a professional <laughs> game designer. I don't know what the solution is. I but I guess they like you hear them giggling and then they <laughs> that's all. Yeah, it was. You know, it was oh, like boy. the most stereotypical Video bong games. ripper 420 gamer tag <laughs> Xbox Live experience you could possibly have, <laughs> and it was like, well, this is how this is gonna go, huh? So you, all right, you just can't get out once you're in the break. I just quit the game. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I've never been in there. It. I think yeah. you get stuck in there for. A I don't even know if it, if yeah if there if it's timed or whatever. If Not you're sure. so, I was just like, forget this. <laughs> oh man. Thanks. Brilliant. I I, like you know that, what I'm though. gonna do next time that we all play together? <laughs> we know where Ryan's <laughs> going. I'm gonna have Ryan immediately. <laughs> I'm going to get my own friends. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll leave Alana on the island. Yeah, yeah that takes out. Yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. All of your nightmares will come, will come to fruition. Uh, okay, the opposite of a nightmare would be a dream, and that is what Game Pass is uh, quickly evolving into. You oh, like yeah. that segue, Marty? That was Marty? really good. You like that? That was, that was really a slick good. pro move. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, the so opposites, yeah. the big news this week is Xbox Game Pass. Uh, it's, it's, of course, it launched last year. Mm. We all thought, okay, this is very interesting. There's some fascinating future implications here. You know, Phil Spencer talked about one day, maybe we would create original content for this, similar to what Netflix does now that, that of course you've rewind what, six, seven years. And that was, that was unheard of for mm. even like, what do you mean? Netflix has their own stuff on it. Uh, but now Microsoft has announced that all first party releases will be on Xbox Game Pass right from their global release day. So that means Sea of Thieves on March 20th. That means State of Decay 2 this spring or whenever, Crackdown 3, Halo 6, mm -hmm. Gears of War 5, etc. It's all going to be there right from the jump. And the reaction to this, as you might expect, was uh, almost universally positive within yeah. the games industry, kind within the community. Of insane. Yeah. Like the value that you get for this is I, incredible. Uh, and this isn't, you know, one of the misconceptions I've seen is people saying, oh, but it's a streaming service. This is just a platform moving towards you having a stream. That actually isn't the case with Game Pass. You can download the game. Mm -hmm. no, it's not you streaming them. It's not them trying to move towards an online-only service. It's, Sony does that, right? Yeah. 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 I don't like that one. 
<laughs> Neither. But yeah. I think I think this system is I don't know, awesome. I'm like struggling to see the downside here. It's, it's fantastic. Also, yeah. It's also amazing yeah. for the price. It's the price like for the year. It's the price of two games. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 120 bucks for the year. 10 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you have it. You've already paid off Crackdown and State of Decay. Mm -hmm. like, and in some up. cases, uh, it's, I know it's with launch day and date. Right. Yeah. yeah. And if I think with the X, maybe the Xbox One X, you get was it a month free? Yeah. It was game a, pass? Some amount of time. Maybe or some bundles, or maybe two. Yeah. It's so. So, you know, there, that even helps get you hooked. And you do yeah. automatically get all the 4K upgrades and everything like that as well. And it's just, I don't know, I think this this service is just such incredible. And if, I just keep wondering, how are they going to make money? <laughs> well, and, and that's such a good deal. That's I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I want to discuss that because that's, you know, you want, you want to take a bigger industry view of this. What does it mean? And this is, are, are we moving to fewer and fewer games purchased? And, it, and clearly Microsoft's okay with that. Mm -hmm. If they can, I think they seem to want to lead the push towards... Mm -hmm. A Netflix-like future because now it's like, who? Nobody really buys DVDs or Blu-rays. Yeah, I was going to say you, that. It, like, I used to, and, and no one cares, such, right? I used to have such a big Blu-ray and DVD collection. Yeah, I, mean, I still that. do. But then now that I have Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, like I can't remember the last time I've bought a physical movie. Like it was probably Star Wars or something. Yeah, um, like the, the original trilogy, not even the new ones. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. Are we going to get to a day where it's like, well, I have enough of these games? on these streaming services. I don't really need to buy anything anymore. So when I did that feature on uh, the state of AAA games and why the games need microtransactions, one part of it that came up that I didn't delve super far into uh, was that gamers are technically buying less games in that um, the industry itself is growing hugely and there are more gamers and more people are spending money, but individual people are buying less games because games are longer at this point. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost a chicken and egg thing. I don't know which came first, people are buying less games or games or services, but like someone like you plays Destiny yeah. for a really long time and then buys less games. So this is probably in response to that. Yeah. And I think, you know, this is the same thing has happened with microtransactions where it's a, yes, people trying to maximize profits, but it's also people trying to figure out solutions to if people are buying less games, how do we make more money long term? And I imagine this kind of service is something that we will see replicated throughout the industry. Pretty well, this, much. And this it's does so good. This so. does a few other things too. Number one, uh, you know, used games have been the bane of of publishers' existences for years and years. This is a move to eliminate used games, and they 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 would go away mm -hmm. entirely if this model catches on. I got a question for you guys. Uh, I saw a few people talking about this on social media. Uh, do you think this is going to impact the the loot box angle for development of the products that are being released on this game's service? Like Forza already kind of has that. Meaning, you meaning we'd see more microtransactions yeah. if people like another way to make supplemental income exactly. for the developers. I don't know that this service will change that anyway. I think the industry's headed in that direction anyway, right? So mm -hmm. it's like I don't think that. EA made EA Access and then decided to put loot boxes into that game. It's more, I, I think mm -hmm. it's just a direction in general. Yeah. I think you're both right. I actually think you're, you're everybody. I just posed the question. That. Yeah, he yeah. Didn't I heard it. I, I don't <laughs> have a statement on it. Yeah, you're right. Though. Yeah. No, I, I no, <laughs> yeah. but I, I think the yes, I, I think there's a good chance that. I, and it's hard to say without we don't know the economics of this. Like yeah. when if Microsoft gets way more Game Pass subscribers and how how. Does Microsoft pay out publishers with yeah. this? You know, is it are there flat fees? Is it is it per is it or is there a like a per game download within Game Pass fee that gets paid? Is it you know we have no idea how the economics work, and that's actually something I would love to ask Phil Spencer next yeah. chance we get. But yeah, I mean, I could definitely see. Um, Depending on how those economics change, that maybe we will see more loot boxes and more microtransactions. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, which the industry has been right, heading towards anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you're right, and then it could have an influence. But yeah, my my go to thought is that that's happening anyway, and would happen even if this Game Pass system didn't exist. Yeah, I mean, true. album sales have been affected by stuff like Spotify, and we know yeah. artists like you, an artist gets a fraction of a penny for each listen on Spotify, and which is why certain people who have like business acumen, like Jay Z and and uh, Beyonce and Taylor Swift, have like moved away from a thing Big like that three. because. I mean, in terms of music, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. serious. Uh, have moved away from, uh, you know, wanting to to sort of have more ownership over that. And <clears throat> one of the things I'm worried about with this, this is incredible for the consumer. I'm worried that this is going to devalue games. I'm worried that people are going to say, so this game comes out for $60, which is the price. Bioshock yes. 4 comes out for $60. And everyone's like, well that's too much for a video game because for $60, I could get six months of all these video yeah. games. Yeah. And I'm like, well, no, that's not, 
that doesn't mean that a video game is not worth sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. We have I'm, that I'm, issue with indies anyway. People yeah, like, yeah. An indie game. I, what do you mean it's forty dollars? Yeah. We're like, yeah, five people like witness, worked yeah. for five years on this game and they have to pay their bills, right? Yeah. And then they get like measly things and there's a sale and people all wait for the sale and then everyone gets ripped off. Like that is a really tough thing to do. I don't with. think either it's going to go away because like, like we look at what happens with Netflix. A lot of a lot of products are launching there exclusively. And uh, they're doing fantastic, like the Punisher series that just came out. That was exclusive to Netflix. But they still have DVD sales where they can make supplemental income. And there's still Blu-ray releases that don't hit Netflix, for example. So I think we'll kind of see that with this game model. Yeah, it's still an opt-in service. Oh, sure. The game has. But um, I'm glad you brought that up. because uh, oh, oh, no. now I just super lost my train of thought. Say your well, thing, your point again. Right uh, devaluing games. Oh yeah, um, because uh, but haven't we? Haven't we sort of already been seeing warning signs about that over the last year? With, for instance, over the holidays, yeah. uh, you know what? Three or four weeks after it came out, Wolfenstein 2's price was cut in half, yep. and we were all like, "Oh God, does that mean Wolfenstein's not selling?" If it's in, if it were to opt into Game Pass. Does that sort of help head that off, really, from a from an economic mm-hmm. standpoint? It's an interesting question. Like, maybe, hey, maybe we should write a feature about this. <laughs> like, it is it is really interesting. You just have to ask the right people. But there's uh, a lot to think about. Yeah. Like, just about what's going to happen. Oh, excellent! Yeah. Someone smarter than us. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, you and I spoke about this the other day, yeah. and I wanted to bring it up. Uh, that one thing that I think that Xbox does not do well is merchandise. Like, yes, they do great with consoles, and yeah, we work it is it. hard to find Xbox t-shirts. Yeah, if you, you know, tribalism, for better and for worse, is stronger than ever, mm-hmm. and PlayStation just launched PlayStation shoes, which an Xbox fan would be like, PlayStation shoes, whatever, I don't care. But <laughs> if there were Xbox <laughs> shoes... Who was that? I don't know who that was. That was... Uh, that story you, came out that? this weekend. <laughs> that story came out this weekend, and everyone's like, I want an Xbox shoe. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I've I seen guarantee- third-party ones, like fake ones, yeah. like people have custom-made them. I guarantee you, uh, Aaron Green. Uh, the, the marketing <laughs> head of micro, at Xbox is a huge sneakerhead. He like posts about it on Twitter all the time. He was probably going like, just pull it. Just going, oh it. God, no! <laughs> I actually considered reaching out to him because like I'm wearing a Kojima Productions shirt right now that was just sent by Insert Coin, who also have a huge PlayStation line. And I was trying to find. I was like, okay, I'm like I'm hosting the Daily Fix, and I keep wearing all these video game shirts. And I was like, despite the fact that I play a ton of Xbox, I don't have a lot of Xbox clothes yeah. because a they aren't sent to us, which right. is like m- mostly how we get our clothes is just like shirts that we have in a green room and B they're hard to find so I went out and tried to find some actively and I found one for Cuphead uh, which actually arrived today it's very cool but it was on a separate website entirely nothing related yeah, that to was Cuphead. through Studio NBHR right right had to go to that site and then yeah. do a different site and, and then like, the other one I found was on Redbubble yeah but like <laughs> I, I actually do have some Gears ones but it's like uh, there is no real hub for you to go to where you can just find a bunch of Xbox your, clothing or merchandise your yeah. fable your chicken chaser shirt from yeah. last week is totally unofficial, right? Yep. It's just yep. like a that's Redbubble, so that's yeah. just a fan made thing. But I was like, this is super cool. Like, if they if they did stuff like that, then I that's it's just such easy money. Like merchandise is so, so profitable. I, I go this is interesting, but wait, right what? How does this tie into the, how does this tie into Game Pass? This was solely just me thinking like a thing where they can make more money than oh, they yeah. want is like yeah. a system that's like this. Like merchandise can help if. Yeah. Game prices are dropping. Like that's what yeah. music does, mm-hmm. right? They like they sell merchandise. Yeah, Stuff and it's um, like a thing that they should totally do. So I wanted to bring up a couple of other things to think about with this, because again, the the almost universal social media reaction it's to this fantastic. was like, yes, this is great, and I think it very much is, as Marty's pointed out for for players, and that's what's most important to us. That's who we're here to advocate for. Um, but I always try to look at it from all the other sides, and I think this also is a great way to goose first party game sales. And I don't say I use sales in quotes now because you're not necessarily purchasing the game, but and plus Microsoft with NPD doesn't like to report sales anyway. They like to report uh, what's their metrics is like the MAU on oh, Xbox yeah, Live, the yeah. you know, or concurrent users or m- oh. monthly active users or something. But this is, you know, this is a way for their game because their games Sony's first party games are are actually the bulk of them are single-player, narrative-driven games. Um, Spider-Man, Detroit, Shadow of the Colossus, God of War, God of War Last Guardian last yeah. year, Horizon. all that stuff. Horizon, thank you, yeah. Whereas the bulk of Microsoft's games are game-as-a-service oriented or, or heavily multiplayer-focused, uh, mm-hmm. whether it's Sea of Thieves coming up, uh, Halo, Gears, State Forza, State of Decay, the four-player co-op. Battlegrounds now, too. Yes, PUBG, absolutely. So 
uh, get these all these first party games going into Game Pass on day one helps ensure a nice healthy player count. So you're you're going to have a higher chance. I mean, Halo Five had already gone into Game Pass, and that helped boost its its player base. So you know, it's it helps keep those games communities alive and thriving mm -hmm. by including them mm -hmm. uh, in day one mm -hmm. of this, which I th I think is Good very point. smart. Um, but <clears throat> it's it also Marty, you and I were talking about this. This is good for things like Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm honestly like assuming I'm, I honestly haven't messed with Game Pass enough to know what the UI is like. Um, but you know, if they do it right, then all of a sudden people who've never heard of Ori or maybe ne hadn't even heard of Cuphead are going to log into Game Pass and see suddenly front and center there's a Microsoft first party game that if they only play Halo and Gears, maybe they're like, oh, this looks really cool, especially if you just start playing a trailer. Because if you're watching the footage of something like Cuphead and Ori, like I don't know anyone who's going to watch that and not be like, oh, I can click this button to try it out. Well, let me do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool. And I also think this is totally a way for. You know, like thinking back, we always harken back to those uh, summer of arcade slash winter of arcade days. Thank you. Where Rip. you know you had these amazing uh, these amazing indie games that became some of our favorite games of the last generation, and that's maybe another thing where you know if they are able to debut day and date on this thing, you're able to get a giant install base on a Jonathan Blow project or a Team Meat project. Yeah, I mean that's how Rocket League was successful. Yeah, hundred percent. That's, that's very exactly that's a perfect yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, another a concern that I saw. That that's worth bringing up is uh, f what about game preservation? Yep, I mean that's that is Microsoft giveth and Microsoft can taketh away. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, I mean, we see that uh, we saw that recently. Activision, a lot of the licensed games have just been yes. delisted from stores, and so stuff like Transformers and Ninja Turtles games, the good Transformers, well, yeah, and the Simpson games. Like if you don't have them downloaded. Those are gone, like yeah, ostensibly but, like PT, where it's like, well, this is this is gone for now. Like this exists in the ether. Freaks me the, out. These yeah. don't only exist digitally, though. So you sure. can still buy the physical copy if that's a concern of yours. A lot of people still like physical media. Mm -hmm. uh, I think being in San Francisco, smaller spaces of living, like we prefer. I prefer digital because of that, because I don't have space yeah. to store more junk. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't so, know, but I, I yeah. hate the idea physical that I could wake up one morning and a thing is just gone. That I can't, yeah. a thing that I was holding off on or saying, like, oh, I'll play this a little bit later is just gone. Um, and I think for, you know, stuff like the video game, uh, the Preservation Society of, and everything, like, I think that is t a total concern that we can wake up one day and I think, like, no one can walk into my house and take a Super Nintendo cartridge or, you know, uh, or Xbox. Well, a Galio dating could step on your PlayStation. Yeah, but that was, that was partially PC. on me. <laughs> She's Don't clearly an Xbox. Don't put it on the Xbox floor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have her on the show. Oh, I love that story. Um, but, uh, you know, no one can take my copy of Earthbound or Chrono Trigger. Whereas, like, if suddenly I log on one day and my copy of Sea of Thieves is just gone because they're like, well, this game's not on here anymore. That kind of sucks. That is a really good point. And I, I think that that's something that hopefully we can combat. You know, like, this is such a young industry and everything moves quite quickly and kind of not often in response to things. Like, things are just like, let's do this to fix this problem and not really think about the long game. Hopefully, things like the Preservation Society can figure out a way to maintain that, mm -hmm. like well, a work around this system. Yeah, like a, a short-term solution is on Game Pass. Of course, you can just buy the game, but I, I think you're thinking at like a discount, a by the way, yeah. too. Yeah. At a discount. Yeah. So it's like what happens in Pass. 20 years. You so know? like if they do remove it, you just you have it still. But yes, like you're saying, 20 years later, you would have had to yeah. buy the physical media and Video Game Preservation Society would have mm -hmm. to store it. Yeah, that, that is yeah. kind of sad. Mm -hmm. um, in a largely positive and, story, and in a <laughs> you know, some people raise concern. Which I think I think this will go away uh, with time as, as you get used to it, just as it has with Netflix, the movie example we were talking about earlier. You know, there are people that are concerned about. Well, I don't know if I like the idea of not actually owning my games. Like, yeah, I think you'll get over that one personally. Oh, it's worked well for Steam. Everyone just like forgets mm -hmm. that they don't actually own their games on Steam, and as soon as you you lose your account, you're gone. You don't have any of those games anymore, and it's mm -hmm. that's working just fine. <laughs> I definitely think people get over that one. Mm -hmm. It well, is weird. You remember when uh, the Xbox launched? They were talking about sort of this philosophy of like everybody can play all your games, and like yeah, the family the sharing. Whole, yeah, the family sharing, and it ended up being a negative for them at that time. Uh, revisiting it now, I think people are just are, are more ready for it. I liked a lot of the concepts that the original Xbox launched with. I think they were marketed very poorly by the person in charge of them. Mm -hmm. So I think some of them were too soon. I honestly yeah. think they tried to push some some things that the industry wasn't up to yet, so yeah. it just yeah. them breaking it, it all at once was too much. I think it made 
difficult situations for them to explain what the services were because they didn't have the lingo to do it yet, mm -hmm. or people just didn't understand. Yeah. And they also just did a bad job of it. But yeah, yeah, it's both. Yeah. There's also the worry that like if the online infrastructure is down, you can't play anything, which True. is much less of a concern for me on Xbox because I feel like it's much more stable than PSN. Like last night, PSN was PSN down, was and yesterday. Zach was texting us saying, "Hey, I can't play literally what any of my video I games do? right now. Like that <laughs> yeah. sucks." I'm like, "Yeah, that does suck." Yeah. yeah, that was a concern um, for me in 2001. Mm -hmm. Like today, it's like. That happens. So yeah. the, the other yeah. key to this, which I think we're starting to see the the results of in 2018, is for Microsoft. You know, you guys pointed out that the the yearly subscription to Game Pass is the cost of two games. Great, but you do need enough of those big first party releases on a fairly consistent basis in order to keep people from canceling Game Pass in order to keep them attached to their subscription and keep them interested. And and in the past, uh, I think really the bulk of this generation, Microsoft has, uh, you know, last year aside, which was just a very dry year for them yeah. as far as release-wise, period, but uh, they've, they've really backloaded most of their big games into the fourth quarter uh, from really August onward, with a few exceptions. So this year we've got Sea of Thieves in March. State of Decay is scheduled for the spring. So hopefully... This year is going to be, like hopefully we've seen the last of that, and mm -hmm. uh, in order to help support Game Pass and this new strategy, we'll start to see their releases spread out more throughout. Well, the and year. that's the thing with the price being so low. Like if you plan on buying any two of State of Decay or Crackdown or uh, Sea of Thieves or the Inevitable Forza, um, then you've done it. <laughs> like the idea that that could yeah. be like the name of the new Forza. Inevitable, the inevitable, inevitable Forza. Forza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I studied marketing in university and most of what I learned in that course was shady, but um, companies from a business <laughs> perspective, and this is a shady one, is that they love subscription models because people forget about them and canceling yes. is difficult. Jim, Jim so, model. yeah, yeah uh, but it, it happened to me with New York Times. I wanted to unsubscribe and I, they were like, they called me actually and were like, hey, what if you didn't? I'm like, you make it difficult for me to unsubscribe. <laughs> so it's like, Are it gets you, annoying. Were they threatening you? Well, they were like, uh, blocking what if, what if, what if you like didn't? Month? Like that'd be cool. That's like, actually so a psychological that's the thing: is that they think that people will forget about it. Like you say, like maybe if that aunt releases, it won't necessarily matter to most people because they won't even realize they're doing it. It's only ten bucks a month. If you're yeah. not paying close attention to that credit card yeah. statement, maybe <laughs> you don't fine. even catch we it. We don't right? care. Just do it. Yeah. 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 Uh, and the last thing I wanted to bring up on this topic is again trying to look towards the future a little bit, and the the tale of this generation has been told many times. The, the this, it's really pretty cast in stone. Like, Sony's in first place, mm -hmm. unless Nintendo <laughs> passes them, although I don't know what generation the Switch is. Microsoft's in second place, uh, even though they're very, very successful. But I really feel like th this, this move with Game Pass is a look towards next generation. I think they are playing between, you know, the, the, the hardware, the, the focus on hardware, the S and the X and how small and powerful and quiet they are, uh, really just literally erasing the old VCR <laughs> Xbox from existence. Uh, we've seen it on the hardware, and I think this this is them playing for the next generation because there will come a point, Albert Pinello is here, and we talked about the, there will be a, a next, a, a, a proper new generation at some point that uh, when we get to that point and... You know, 360 really kind of won last generation. PS4 turned the tables this generation by for a number of reasons, and the bar. So the the you know it kind the bar kind of resets up to an extent, mm -hmm. heading into the next one. And when that happens, Microsoft has powerful hardware, and they've got backwards compatibility, and they've got a Game Pass service where all their new first party stuff and all the old stuff is in this ten dollar a month subscription fee. And that makes when that bar when that reset comes, mm -hmm. it makes they Microsoft look awfully appealing heading into the next generation. That's yeah, I think, I think 2018, talking about release cadence in the last topic, uh, 2018 is going to be okay. I think 2019, they're going to like nail, nail just those exclusives that you need to have the Game Pass for. And like the business strategy of it works for them. And everybody, the common consensus is the X is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And like that oh, yeah. console that like you want to have if you're playing on Xbox right now, like it's the most desirable platform to be owned. I hope their 2019 has that cadence because I'm less worried about 2018 and more of, well, if everything we know or we think is going to come out in 2018 comes out, we don't know anything coming out in 2019, literally. But we know Gears Phil's 5, yeah. uh, Motorsport 8, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Well, I think that that's the point. Of, I yeah. think Halo will be this year. Others disagree and think that that could be 2019. I think that'll be next year. And like, it's also you know the rumors with Perfect Dark and, and right. Fable. I actually I assume that based on all of the things that uh, have been said recently about them actually focusing on the exclusives, I'm kind mm-hmm. of in in the same camp as you that I think that we'll get a lot of announcements at E3 this year and releases mm-hmm. 2019 they, and 2020. They just so. had that restructuring where Phil got promoted. They're really focusing on games right now. You, they you know. can't make a game in six months. So it's like, no, like you I, can't. I, I, they've been talking about this since I think like October was it's like been two the, years. The, His oh, really? first quote was like two years ago. Yeah. Focusing on first parties and development. Man, that didn't two years ago. That's I don't know about maybe that. I'm excited. The, the last, the Let's last say time a year. that I remember talking uh, about it was uh, on this show was like late last year, where they were like, "Yeah, this is like our number one strategy right now." So in theory, like based on that amount of time, it should be. I I got to figure Fables a 2020, 2020 game. Because yeah. they're, they're still hiring a bunch of like key positions at mm-hmm. that at that new team yeah. at Playground. Uh, if if the perfect dark rumor is true, I'm gonna guess that's a 2020 game. I would think so too. Also, who's making it? Uh, so again, I'll, I'm gonna I still maintain that those perfect dark, if it's real, Fable uh, could be they could be next generation Xbox launch titles. Yeah, I th- I think this year's Put about out there. A, this year's about announcements. Next year is about awesome releases for the Xbox, so it's just like the most appealing console to be owning. And then 2020, maybe they're just like, "Hey, we got the library now. Here's even more, you yeah. know, because those the games that are in development, Perfect Dark, Fable, they can release by that time." The problem is finding the the that sweet spot of when you announce compares to to when the game's going to come out. Because I, I think that's going to be so hard. For well, that's the thing is that Crackdown, Sea of Thieves, and State of Decay have been three of the games we've been talking about. I feel like literally for well, the longest two and a half years of anything in there. Um, and so they don't want that to happen. But they can't not announce them exactly. when they have all this pressure that's like, totally. we don't have any exclusives. Yeah, so exactly. I think that's so, got to be yeah, really I don't, hard. I definitely don't have the answer to that. Like, I don't know what the sweet spot is. Like, yeah. Sony did do you really do one job. of those? Sony does an all right job, but you're wearing a, a Kojima shirt, and we're not going to be playing that game for 14 okay. years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also, yeah, I mean, we only just got a release date for God of War, and that's coming out in April. Like, even that cadence is really odd, and I don't think anyone's really must. I think Nintendo does a pretty good job, and I think Bethesda nails it, actually. Yeah. They're like, hey, it's E3. This game's coming out at the end of the year. Here it yeah, is. But, yeah, but they only put out they put out such a, a smaller quantity of games than a than a first party publisher yeah. does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and that's there. Some some third parties pump out tons of little games, yeah. but that's not how Bethesda rolls. So. True. I think Sony's been pretty good, but I think we saw them struggle at PSX this year because they're just like we don't have anything to talk about. Well, you know. well, that was because of Paris Games Week, though. So that even right. that one was like a the, weird choice on their behalf. But. I was yeah, just going to say just, it was sparse. Yeah, they they Sony. As they do so many conferences that I don't know how the hell they're. That was yeah. That one was because <laughs> they chose Paris Games Week instead. It's going to be interesting like, to see what they talk about at E3 this year. Is what I'm saying because like yeah, we're going to see Spider Man again. God of War is going to be out. So like, what's next? Last of Us two and Spider Man. Besides, well, and yeah. Death Stranding and, and Ghost of Tsushima yeah. and Detroit There's, and all the you. stuff we've Welcome seen. Welcome to Beyond, our <laughs> weekly PlayStation <laughs> podcast. Well, that's the that no one. No one yeah. Has nailed the cadence in my mind. Maybe Bethesda, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, I feel like Bethesda's the only one that I can be like, just continue doing your E3 as mm-hmm. you do it, and I like it like that. But you're right. Like we need we need to find out some things that are maybe two years away. But mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, you yeah, do kind of lose steam when you talk about for too long. Point I was trying to make is I think we know what's coming from Sony. We're going to be really excited to see what's coming from Xbox, and I think that's going to inspire a lot of conversations and excitement from the community. Yeah, that's all I was trying. I to hope make. so. The point. Yeah, I was trying to no make. doubt. Yeah. Uh, so big stuff from Game Pass. Uh, that's. Yeah, how do you not subscribe to Game Pass at this yep. point yeah. from, a, from a player's <laughs> perspective? Uh, next this week, John Cena. Oh, boy. Ba-ba-da-ba. One of the most popular uh, <laughs> WWE superstars uh, out there has has uh, been one of the few that's been able to successfully translate to a film career. Uh, and he's attached to a, a Duke Nukem film. Did he get to the part in the script where he has the hold fecal matter? Because I hope so. I hope he knows that Duke Nukem did that in the cave. This shit won't flood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so. man. Have uh, you seen my Rotten he, Tomatoes score? <laughs> I think he's he's a, he's a good actor and he's funny. And I think that he'll do yeah. a good job of this role. And he doesn't take himself too seriously. But it's totally. also like, of all of the video game movies that I want to be good, I hope Duke Nukem isn't the first one. Like, that's the one that's like, yeah, this is what a good video game movie is like. And then the like the mainstream media are like, this is what a video game movie is. <laughs> so, and then yeah. we're just like screwed forever. Well, yeah. we, do have, we do have Tomb Raider in like two months. Right. Which looks... Uh, not looks only, good. I think, pretty good, yeah. but it looks 
extremely faithful to the story of the 2013 <laughs> game, right? The reboot, the, yeah. The only way, hopefully, I, without all the supernatural crap. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's I just hate my that own stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The only yeah. way I see this working is we got to forget who the old Duke Nukem was. He needs a refresh. Don't forget me, Destiny. And, like no, like the, <laughs> the well, chauvinistic douchebag. Well, the thing is, you can't. Like, who there's are you parts calling? about that character that can be translated <laughs> sure. to a modern character and still yeah. work. I mean, Duke Nukem, but they need to get rid of the old. Duke person. Nukem yeah. worked 23 years ago because he was a commentary of action movies of the 80s. Yeah, and like, if you do that now, everyone's gonna go to the movie theater and be like, "Did you sustain?" a head injury like why are you doing yeah. this like yeah. have you forgotten about what's happened over the last two decades so sure if you modernize have. it i imagine yeah. they have to right i yeah. have amnesia <laughs> what i do kind of like it? the idea of that duke nukem does go into a coma and then wakes up in 2018 <laughs> and is like being just a just chauvinistic <laughs> prick and everyone's like dude that's not cool oh, like, that's funny. That yeah, would be like, really good. there's actual know. nazis outside <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Those uh, Nazi bastards are going to pay for shooting up my campus. <laughs> what's what's the funny cop yeah. movie where they have to pretend to be high schoolers and everyone's like, you're an adult. 21 Jump 21 Street. Jump. Like yeah. 21 Jump Street would be an interesting angle to kind of take <laughs> with uh, a Duke Nukem-like character. Like Marty said, like, no, that's oh not God, okay to be like Duke that. Nukem has to infiltrate a super liberal college? <laughs> 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 yeah. Hi, did you promise to go to Buckley? <laughs> oh my god, oh, it goes man. to Berkeley? It's oh, why are you chained to a tree? <laughs> I think there's a way are to you make in the this Antifa. Fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of this. Uh, you guys told me on it. Yeah, there's, you everything there's there. good on both sides. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I think John Cena is great casting yeah. for this. He's too, you know what's so weird though? It's like he's he, he he seems like such an actually genuinely good person. Oh, yeah. yeah. That I was like it's gonna take some acting for me to get to believe that he's 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 like an asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen him in uh? Is it, what's it? Trainwreck, the Amy Schumer movie. Yes, he was, he was great. He's yeah. just excellent. He was he just, great. Like, completely makes fun of himself and is kind of a dick. <laughs> well, I guess he's not that much. He's just weird. She's a dick in that situation. But I digress. Uh, I that gave me like faith that he could totally own this, and I think that he could be like a lovable. I mean, I think job. totally this thing is going to live and die in its script. Like if it has oh, a God, smart yes. self-aware yeah. script, yeah. like it'll yeah. knock it out of the park if they clumsy. I mean, the, the name that scares me here, produced by Michael Bay. That's scary. <laughs> no, I think that's that makes it even funnier, though, because it's like, oh, who else I would mean, you pick to do that? Produced by Michael Bay, Bay, written by said, Seth Rogen. Uh, Michael Bay also did Pain and Gain, which was, it was starring the... It's the Rock and someone else, or The Rock and Mark Wahlberg, I think. And it was totally a sort of Duke Nukem esque two meathead lampooning action movies. And it was actually really smart. Well, again, he's so. he's just producer, right? He's not yeah, just producer. So it, yeah. yeah, I feel like this will be this will be fine. Yeah. But uh, again, you know, not great for people taking it. I like how everyone's always like fine. <laughs> where we'd love a Halo movie or a Shadow of the Colossus movie. Like, here's how a new movie. Yeah, like, so that's, that was my first why reaction. Did that happen? It was like, why who asked for this one? Yeah. Well all the other things we want. I think I have the answer to that. Oh. It's probably Randy Pitchford. because uh, he owns <laughs> yeah. Duke Nukem and oh. Gearbox owns Duke Nukem. And that brings the question to tie this back into video games rather than just a, a thing based on video games is Duke Nukem Forever was released in 2011. That is the last original Duke Nukem game, other than some re, uh, just some re-releases that have come since. So the question is, if Gearbox and Randy Pitchford own this thing, and they're trying to get a film off the ground, that can't be a coincidence. I mean, there, I would have to think there's got to be a game in the works. I mean, Randy's teased it. He is talk I asked him about it on Unfiltered and he, you know, very much left the door open, but that team so far as we know is busy with Borderlands. So what I want to ask you guys is do you think is uh I guess there's a couple different ways it could go, but ultimately is if this film happens and it may not i mean that's, that's there's nothing there's oh, no there director been a, there's there have no been script. a million video game movies announced yeah. that never came yeah. out but yeah. if this happens is this randy pitchford's master plan to reignite the ip and then have a, a new game in the in the uh in development to then Release to a to a you know a world that's much more willing to go play it and pay attention. A thousand to it. percent, I would yes. Say yes. There is no video game movie that's ever been made made on a dormant IP. Like you look at The Rock's Doom, that was shortly after Doom Three. You yeah. look at uh, Assassin's Creed, Warcraft, Tomb Raider, like Witcher is being made. Like none of these things exist in a vacuum. Like these are totally like um, making uh, uh, <clears throat> rampage. I stand correct. <laughs> Which looks All horrible, right. by the way. All right. It looks well, so uh, bad. Stand correct. Witcher is technically on hold right now, but. Yeah, what but it's not like because it got asked to leave seven years ago. <laughs> 
It's not because someone yeah. walked in. And that I building. guarantee you, The Witcher Four is in development. <clears throat> in well, pre, they, do you? They've said that that's not happening. So there you go. Boom. They are lying because money. <laughs> Well, I would bet. They said they, they might make a new Witcher game. It's definitely not going to be The Witcher 4. Is there, I, well, I think so. The Witcher Punk isn't even close. Hey, Yo, the big, it's going to be the Big E3 reveal. They, I predicted the Big E3 reveal, and then all of a sudden the Twitter became non dormant again. For Cyberpunk? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, not The Witcher, for Cyberpunk. Yes, he says Cyberpunk's not close. I think Cyberpunk's a lot closer than we think. Oh. And I think they have a second team absolutely yeah, pre-pro on Witcher 4, awesome. and I think it's going to be called Witcher 4. <laughs> they said it's not. I Which are? They not. lie. They're I Polish. We lie. <laughs> that, we lie all the time. I lie to you all the time. That's true. On a daily you lie basis. to me like, quite a lot. Yeah. No, it's a good point. All right. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll be a game. I think the game would be contingent on uh, the movie doing well. Like, I don't even think they'd ramp something up. They might have ideas, but I, I don't know. I just, why would he co-develop a game and then the movie bombs then the end the game bomb. Oh, he doesn't have like to develop a, a game. Process. I mean, they publish games though. You could have just any studio do it. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why like, you know, either I guess it's one of two choices, either Gearbox proper jumps on it uh after Borderlands is done, which Borderlands 3, I've friendly reminder, not officially announced yet. <laughs> so weird. um yeah, I know, right? And then so there's either that option, which would probably mean that let's say let's just say there's no script, there's no director, but Let's say this film gets made. That probably means it's a twenty late twenty nineteen, maybe a twenty twenty film. Mm -hmm. Still not enough. Like the game would still come way later uh, if, yeah. you're, if you're not even starting it till after Borderlands three. Or since Gearbox is a publisher now, they go find someone to yeah. make it for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Fulbright. Let's Steve Gainer make it. Oh, I just yeah. I just can't imagine a world where Duke Nukem's being developed. <laughs> Or we see a trailer. What's for in a my new attic? Nukem game. <laughs> like well, I, I want mean, he was a sexual just, awakening. Wasn't he, he? Wasn't he only just put into what was it? Was he put into Bulletstorm? Yeah, he was put into Bulletstorm. And that was really recently. badly, I might add. Oh really? Did not, I didn't try it. It was well, and they released the Duke twentieth anniversary. A re -release. Is that what it was? The re-release. Yeah, yeah re that's what. It was. Yeah. 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 So this, they all, this just seems like an early pitch, and it got picked up by the Hollywood Reporter. So we're talking about. I mean, it's yeah. got yeah. someone cost, but it, so. but it's fair to wonder like how the hell does this tie into a game? And it's yeah. like either the game's going to come a fair bit later or somebody else is going to step in. Uh, Where's that Uncharted movie? <laughs> I will say though, on the topic of Bulletstorm, of actually, I don't remember. Does Epic still love them? But people can fly if they're independent. Well, so the thing about be, people can fly is. Who? Uh, I believe they're independent, but like most of the creative leads of Gears of War's Judgment went to the astronauts who made the Vanishing I'm talking Carter. Bulletstorm, son. Yeah. yeah, they were people can fly. I know. But and most of, of those not, even, not even Judgment. Oh, yeah, but most of those leads are now at the astronaut yeah. who made oh, okay. uh, Vanishing Ethan Carter and now working on that game that they showed at. Oh, yeah, the half um, shooter, half. What's the it one, called? It's one that started off uh, like a walking simulator and yeah, ended with like a yeah. demon killer. And the guy who made Bulletstorm as well. Yeah. Uh, what was it called? That looked cool as hell, yeah. whatever that game was. Um, but it's called Cool as Hell. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. From people can fly. Ha. <laughs> We're not astronauts. Oh, they are still owned by Epic. Yeah. Um, oh, I thought they were not. Nope, never mind. 2015, it was announced they had once again become a independent. independent. did it. Yeah. Also Polish. Fun fact. So don't trust anything. Don't trust them <laughs> either. Yeah, don't trust any of these people. So uh, watch this space for all things Duke <laughs> Nukem, and we'll see what happens. Do you think, what if they get... I was about to say, what if they get John St. John to to voice John Cena in this movie? That would be that's a John St. John, John Cena. John Sebastian. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> I like John Cena. John, John St. John Cena. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> <laughs> that would make John St. John really happy, actually. Probably, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next, this was this was a fun thing that happened at IGN this week. Uh, we so we we all huddled up, Alana, Marty, myself, and said uh, when all the fable stuff with Playground broke last week, we we're like, let's totally do a staff. Like, what do we want to see from this Fable Four reboot? Whatever, let's just do a little roundup feature. Ask everybody what they think about it, and then I said uh, out loud, it'd be really funny to ask to get Peter Molyneux just in the middle of it and not tell anyone. <laughs> so so I emailed him. And he was totally, he not only was not insulted that I emailed him, he was super excited and wrote back instantly with like three paragraphs that are not only. They sound great. They're, yeah. they're awesome. Oh, yeah. Like they sh Playground should uh, take a quick look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just for reference, 
if they're if they're curious. Mark. I just did like how it was like there was like an intro and then it was Ryan McCaffrey, executive yep. editor, Alana Pierce. Yeah. Uh, well, producer. yeah, you were like, hey, Alana, do you want to be a uh, before or after <laughs> Peter Molyneux? And I was like, oh, before. <laughs> yeah, put mine before him. Peter Molyneux, uh, creator of Fable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did he? Uh, uh, what did he say, Marty? <clears throat> All sorts of stuff. Ooh. Right. I just imagine that video, it's like my takes, like, I hope they have farts, and then it's Peter Molyneux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, yeah. I'm going to make someone a god. Uh, he said he wants a Fable story hinted at a dramatic time before Fable 1 when the guild was founded. This would be a perfect setting for Fable 4, and the land of Albion would be much more primitive. Uh, the magic much more attuned to nature. The combat would be much more brutal. The story would be following the founding members of the Heroes Guild and why it was set up. I would love yes, to see go br- on. brutal, visceral, and fluid combat systems yes. that left permanent scars. Weapons like short swords, long swords, daggers, you spears. You want to know how I got these long scars. Bows, crossbows, and maybe like pool cues cracked in half. That probably wouldn't be real. <laughs> uh, all having their own combat feel and specialties. Skilled <laughs> tryouts. Oh, oh, never mind. Uh, the magic system should be revamped with the ability to yeah. craft your own unique oh, we're system. We're looking at a good Fable like game Divinity on the video, you yeah. guys. Uh, having a familiar of your choice, oh. bird, cat, dog, goldfish, which assists you with magic and bonds yes. with you. I like the idea of different animals. The goldfish seems useless. Personally, Why have not? you you so. haven't met a, clearly you haven't met magic goldfish before? He would no. be magic. Just I carry a, around the fish I had ball. a beta fish at one point. Yeah. How long are you going to make a beta? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he continued a whole new creature bestiary of opponents to fight with hordes of small creatures to god sized giants and, of course, dragons in ridable. parentheses, rideable. Ooh, yes. Yeah, I'm totally down for that. <laughs> Uh, allowing a player to morph their own alignment based on their actions, so you'd become a thief if you sneak and, uh, and steal, or a knight if you adhere to a code of honor, etc. Which I like. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I love the I, idea that you don't have to choose a class; it's the act, it the class chooses, chooses you. you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, having your own loyal horse, which you can train and bond to. Having your own home, which you can build from scratch up to an abode to fit your hero. Marriage, yes. Co-op, yes. Towns, cities, and villages, yes. Commerce, yes. Open world, yes. First person option, yes. <laughs> that one was weird. <laughs> that <laughs> one made me uncomfortable. Crowbar in the middle. Yeah, uh, I could go on forever about my beloved world of fable well i, I always I, really like the homeowning stuff that was actually a little fun in the economy mm-hmm. with that how you yeah. can, like rent out places you basically just like really own the entire i like the idea that you just become like a crooked landowner well totally. kind of yeah, yeah. It, i was just so excited after reading this because uh you can hear the, the passion like in the words that he's chosen yeah. to describe this game that he loves it also i can imagine it. being yeah. on his team at the start of a project him saying he wants all these things and every designer being like oh god we're not able to do any of this <laughs> yeah. yeah like we can put a dragon in i think <laughs> yeah dragon <laughs> writable oh no we can't do that that's too much. but um, playground games like did you finish the box model yeah this all sounds <laughs> this all sounds awesome like it just totally does sound like stuff that should be in a 2020 fable game. He, yeah. he yeah. also has clearly thought about this prior to me emailing him, yeah. which is yeah. great. I love that about him. Mm-hmm. I know you know a lot of people uh, give him flack. Some of it may be justified for the things he's said over the in the past. But I just, I'm sorry. I will. I am a Peter Molyneux defender, mm-hmm. <laughs> not apologist, but defender. Yeah. I just, I appreciate his his passion and enthusiasm for games and for the industry and for. The, you know, I would rather a developer like him dream big and fall miss short, and yeah. fall short than than settle for mediocrity. Freaking Activision yeah. it every single time and just like, what's going to sell the most? Just do that bare minimum. Go. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. So yep. that's yeah, me. this is this is cool and also makes me more excited. Like I love the idea of it about of it being about how the guild started. Mm-hmm. And- Fable One already has those established heroes as well. Like we have Jack of Blades established then already, and there's all the the heroes that you're trying to find. Uh, I don't remember the the Rose Lady who was one of the older oh, heroes yeah. who'd been in the arena. Like they have, you know, the whole of heroes there with all those statues and everything. Yes. It would be really cool to see like what those people were all about and how mm-hmm. they came about. And yeah, yeah, totally. like it was it. funny too reading through all of this and then reading Scarlet and because I built the article like. Everyone had an idea that he had already been like, yeah, I've, I thought of this too. And I was like, God oh, damn it. Like, I was totally like, I want to be pre Albion, like a more primitive thing with God sized monsters. And then I saw his, and I was like, damn it. <laughs> the same thing. You're just like, maybe we should just uh, freelance, get him as a freelance writer for our features. Just, sure. just be like, hey, what Why do you not? want this game to be? I, I, yeah, oh go. my God, a weekly column. Hey, Peter, what should this be? <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's good. Yeah. Let's do that. Called Peter Molyneux designs, yeah, and then right. so it's this week he designs Cuphead two. What's Minecraft two? <laughs> yeah, Minecraft two, the ne- Dark Souls four. And he's just thought about all of them. You just like, hey, you just email him, and immediately he's like, well, let me tell you about Minecraft. I was like, you just copy and paste the that. primitive you times. had that written somewhere. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> what's happening with this video game? Oh, That's that Fable game so one. Much. Ooh. Oh no! I recaptured this the other day on the video. Why'd we version. use this one? The video the version. Part of we the beach where that lady. We're sorry, everybody. 
A ghost? All right. Audio listeners are like, please move on. <laughs> All right. So finally, uh, Destin, you yeah. continue to play a lot of PUBG. Yeah. It's gotten, we have to point out, that it, make sure we're taking note that it has received continued multiple frequent patches. It's Correct. getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not only is the game on Xbox getting better and better. X, on the X. On the X specifically. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, it's good to see PUBG's doing some, some charity work through yeah. the game here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they're giving away money to some people. Uh, they plan to <laughs> donate up to two million to video game related charities this year, the studio announced today. The two million will be pulled from the sales of PUBG's 2017 Gamescom Invitational Crates, which contained exclusive cosmetic items. That's a loot box I'm willing to buy. <laughs> the news follows PUBG Corp's $100,000 donation to the Twitch PUBG Winter Charity Invitational held in December 2017. In 2018, $300,000 will go toward the PUBG Extra Life Charity Marathon, which will be held from January 29th through February 2nd in support of Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. It's a great, that's a great, yeah. great. thing yeah. to do. Well, this is good. Yeah, good for them. I mean, it's, you know, they've, they've become such a stratospheric global phenomenon uh, success is is even too gentle of a word and it's, it's great to see them give back and set a uh, a positive example for for other games and other other developers and publishers what did you mean landing at pachinki if you're watching i saw that i was like i oh, land pachinki. on this house every time you're quite ballsy you always go to pachinki <laughs> that house every single time wow hey the house didn't hey, so if you ever want to break this and find that rubber, that house a <laughs> little bit of rubber banding this was captured uh one patch ago so it's uh much more stabilized yeah i had some rubber banding issues as you're seeing now but uh yeah it is it is running a little bit better still not ready to update the review we're waiting for that standard Xbox stabilization to kick in. Yeah, yeah, no uh, doubt. And fix the cars. <laughs> the cars are ridiculous. Oh, aren't they working on that, though? Yeah, well, they adjusted it, but still. Still too much. Top 10 is like five people in cars, yeah. at least, running over the other people. The, uh, first, yeah. the first chicken dinner that I ever got was that I accidentally ran over the other guy. I didn't know where they were. <laughs> You're evil. And I accidentally I ran over them and was like, Oh, I won! They're like, <laughs> oh my god! Speed bump! It was like completely yeah. unintentional. It was great. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> I hate the cars. <laughs> Finally this week, We Happy Few, which is a game that we've been looking forward to for quite some time. Uh, it really, it had been around, and then it, it really, its profile elevated at, uh, was it 2016 E3, 3, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah where they, they showed off a, a narrative-driven campaign mode on top of the other sort of uh, roguelike sandbox sandbox type mode and that campaign looked really solid uh, the game was since picked up by Gearbox to publish we were talking about that just a few minutes ago with Duke actually but it has it had a, an April uh, release window on it that has been pushed back to the summer I don't know what's going on with this game like oh. <laughs> I'm I'm <clears throat> like they the video they released with it I thought was really great. It was super yeah. open and honest and the thing they're working on is uh the the story campaign in this game which is the thing I'm interested in are yes. three smaller campaigns that follow three different characters. Oh cool, I like that. And they said one of them straight up they were like it's a really good campaign. We hated the first hour of it. And so they said we could release this game but we'd release one of the campaigns with a really boring first hour that pays off at the end and so we wanted to redesign the opening of this campaign. Mm. Yeah. Good and, for them. And for they're just like straight up being honest, up front. And yeah. they're like hey, we're really we're super confident with two of these campaigns and with one of them we felt like it was lacking behind and so we want to revamp the opening of this which to me a i love the idea of three smaller campaigns yes that's all i ever Monty. want mm -hmm. classic vignettes um and this like the story is what i'm interested in so yeah i don't know i have enough games in in april clearly now it's and weird because people have been able to play this for almost two years in uh, yeah. early access we actually have a let's yeah. play that's up on the channel which is like this time ago yeah i know it just feels crazy. like it's out yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the, even without the narrative stuff, this game is a lot of fun. I loved what I played of it. I really like the world. I really yes. like all the voice acting and all the weird characters that you come across. I think it has a lot of character. But uh, I imagine that it was originally, was it procedurally generated as well? Yes. And that was the thing that, you know, that's difficult to pull off. But I imagine they were like, okay, this is cool. People aren't loving it that much. We got to hone in on the narrative. And that's kind of why the development has taken quite a while. Also, who could possibly be mad you know, because gamers get, and justifiably a lot of times get, get frustrated at delays. They're looking forward to these games, but mm. with an explanation, with a, with as open and honest of a, of a of an explanation as yeah. they gave, how could you possibly mean bad? Yeah. yeah, no, ship me the one with the crappy first hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. give it to me. Yeah, that's what <laughs> nobody's gonna do that. Right <laughs> yeah, and that's what I mean. And I don't know. As we're seeing, the first half of 2018 is becoming more and more fleshed out with you know Far Cry and Sea of Thieves and uh, now with God of War and presumably maybe Red Dead. Nintendo Labo. Nintendo Labo. 
Labo. Don't know how that's pronounced yet. Yeah. 420, baby. Microsoft needs their 420. <laughs> what are they going to put there? Say decay? 420. There <laughs> you go. To, yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. There it is. That'd be terrible. Don't do that. No, no one else no, put no games on 420. No one else put a game on 420. <laughs> we got Don't enough. Do it. Yeah. yeah. We got enough. Unless it's marijuana related, then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> marijuana the game? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of games of gold this month. <laughs> I was trying to think of a state of decay marijuana joke. It wasn't half. It's like state of blaze. Oh, uh, it doesn't I, quite, I, doesn't quite I, work. I have seen some good puns about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they are, though. <sighs> anyway. Down. Uh, that wraps it up for the news this week. I go over to Alana Pierce. Hey, what's up? What can we spend our money on? What's out this week in the world of Xbox? Game releases. See attached sheet. The attached sheet <laughs> says... Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, The Hidden Ones, uh, is January 23rd. This is the uh, first DLC, which is set Mm -hmm. after Origins, and it takes, like, more of a look at Bayek. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Occupying Force of Romans, and and his fledgling Assassin's Brotherhood continues to grow. Um, I'm pretty excited about that one. It's a disaster, though, because no one in the office has a high-level save file, so we're figuring out how to cover it. I had to talk to a freelance to do a capture for us, because... It was just a weird well, way. Well, we played, it on, we played it on you a pre-release. And, yeah. so three of us. And Barrett and <laughs> three of us finished the yeah. game with high-level characters. I yeah. think I got to level 35, and yeah. then I can't have that save file ever again. So it's like, hey, Alana, do you want to start it from the start again? No, I do not. <laughs> no. Oh, it's infuriating, but we'll figure it out. Uh, okay, KO, let's play Heroes January 23rd. That's Cappy. That is Cappy mm-hmm. Mara, yeah. Uh, Bring Celeste. on below. <laughs> Bring on below. Celeste uh, is January 22nd. The review of that one is going on tomorrow morning. I'm going to press pause for a second. Uh, I know a few of us have played Celeste. Yes. That is the game where no one knows what it is. Mm-hmm. I did not, until Tom Marks, who's reviewing it for us, came in and was like, you guys have to play this. <laughs> like, what What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, so that's out on Friday mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. Xbox and everything else, it's by the way. from the uh, developer of Towerfall. Yeah. Yeah. As, as, as soon as Tom game. said that, I was like, all right, uh, it's built. Our review yeah. hits, I mean, it should be up by the time you hear this, but I can't tell you what it's getting. But that is the first sort of out of nowhere, unbelievable mm-hmm. game of, of the year for yeah. sure. I know yeah. that's like kind of backhanded because it's only January 20, whatever, but stop and pay attention to Celeste. Man, I think that kind of happened. Like it's happened to us before. Like The Witness was like a really early like oh, yeah. Undertale. I mean, the things with those pilot, though, yeah. like st- with stuff like The Witness, like we were all looking forward to it because yes. like we were all yeah. like, oh man, the second game from the dude who made Braid. And same thing with Inside. We we're all like, oh yes. God, the yeah, Limbo right. follow up. Whereas this, like I didn't know this existed until a couple weeks ago. And also out when I was like, what the Towerfall follow up would be like, oh, it's probably gonna be like a four player. Like, nope, this is a single player. Uh, tough as nails puzzle platformer that also has an incredibly emotional story attached. Yeah, to it. it's about uh, a character called Madeline surviving her inner demons on her journey to the top of Celeste Mountain. If you guys want to check it out, also we did a stream a few days ago. You can check out the archives. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was with Tom and, and Chloe, Chloe, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So you guys can see what their thoughts were, and they're really good at the games. So. Yeah. And it's cool. uh, it's I mean it's it's the thing I think that'll get our listeners' attention is it's most similar from a gameplay perspective to Super Meat Boy. Yes. Where it's just. Mm-hmm. It's hard, but uh, but like in- respawn instantly. Mm-hmm. Keep trying. Yeah. Keep going. Super keep smart. Figuring super it out. simple mechanics. Yes. but like just incredible level and puzzle design. Yes. Yeah. Very God, good. It's good. Uh, I've also got Dragon Ball Fighters, which is Xbox One X enhanced, mm-hmm. and Monster Hunter World, which is also Xbox One X yeah. enhanced. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Huge Mitchell release. reviewed it. I think even an eight point. And those are both on Fridays. You like that? Um, two two big then, releases. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then by the time, most likely by the time you hear this, our Monster Hunter World review will Monster also be Hunter up. That's uh, Thursday morning. morning. Yeah. 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 So just banger year or banger month for games. I'll say. Yeah. It. I mean, those, yeah. th- those three games: uh, Celeste, Dragon Ball, and <laughs> uh, and Monster Hunter. Those are just like very three, good games. Three un- incredible games that are like yeah, must plays. Sea of Thieves in there too. The yeah, beta. The beta. The, yeah, yeah the beta running this weekend. Absolutely. Um, and then Marketplace January Games with Gold, we have The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing the Third from January 1 to 31 on Xbox One. Zombie January 16 to February 15 on Xbox One. Tomb Raider Underworld January. That's over. That's over. <laughs> and Army of Two January 16 to 31 on Xbox One and Xbox 360. All right. Let's do trivia real quick. And uh, we've got a nice, easy three way tie to start the year with and all I'm, three of you with a point. I'm worried about this one. <laughs> yeah, we both know this one. Yeah. We've got the, I don't listen the to in music. touch, the pop culturally in touch people on this side of the panel. And on oh. this side of the panel, the olds who don't pay attention. If it was about closely. Fear Factory, I would probably know the question. <laughs> well, here we go. Uh, uh, <laughs> our, our Twitter user and fan uh, at uh, Mac Peepol. Which is exactly M A C P P O L. Mac people. I thought you said pee hole. Oh, Mac people. 
Yeah, like people mm. who like Macintosh. Geniuses. We should, yeah, yeah, we should probably move on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> In Kendrick Lamar's song oh Duckworth, which is, uh, of course, the final track on the number one album of 2017, Damn, what title of an Xbox exclusive game can be heard? It's now, it's not necessarily a reference. In fact, it is not a reference to the game, but it is the, the words that happen to be uh, the game here. I don't Did sing he, along he, to a lot of Kendrick Lamar well, songs. So. <laughs> li- <laughs> number so one mad. album of 2017. If it was T Swift. I know was it. it. Actually, yeah, it was. Oh, I, I mean, know at that. least it was. I, I know it's my favorite song on the. Album. It was Rolling Stones number one. Maybe that was just a critic and mm. not sales. But I mean, I'm sure yeah. its sales are way through the roof too. Yes. Anyway, yep. uh, but it, there's no excuse, Destin, for you and I not knowing this. Thankfully, I'm not part of this trivia game. <laughs> if but it I will helps, ad- uh, the first <clears throat> line in the song that Kendrick says is "Oh, Lamar." <laughs> can, can you sing part of the song for me? Like maybe, can, can you give me a hint? Uh, maybe I'll the, remember the, the song. The very start of the song is, it was always me versus the world until I found out it's me versus me. Is that, is that the tune? All right. <laughs> no, uh, that's I, just gonna, me singing. We're going to move on. Uh, oh, so oh, no. what what words that are an Xbox game <laughs> title really can be funny. heard? <laughs> Dead Rising, Gears of War, Crackdown, or State of Decay. None of those are... Custom SEO. It's not like he's saying Ori in the Blind. Right? <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, me and my Wii U. Anything like that. So, Destin, since uh, we've got some confident people over here, I'm going to go to you first. I have no idea. Totally a shot in the dark. I'll say, st- it's. I think State of Decay or Crackdown. I'll go with Crackdown. Okay. I want to give you a, a, a tip. Kendrick's smarter than you probably would think that he is. Crackdown's the easiest one. He's he's pretty poetic. Are you saying I shouldn't pick that? Are you trying to screw me up? Who knows? <laughs> wow, there's mind games going on wow. now, and it's only January. Incredible. Yeah, we can't drag this out. Too I mean, I, I guessed already, so... Okay. All right, he's going yeah. with Crackdown. Mm-hmm. Gears of War. Gears of War. It is Gears of oh, War. Okay. Yeah. I had no clue. Like, I had no I, chance I, We're not judging this. you. That's how I yeah. felt about the yeah. Dirty Rock one. I was like, pff, I don't know. I didn't Gears of War is more poetic than State of Decay? Well, no, your well, guess being Crackdown like was games. like, Crackdown's easy. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, yeah. He would probably would have thought of his word choice better. Yeah. More. So, yeah. You can listen to Damn on Spotify. Yes, I'll listen is, to this song. Like, <laughs> good song. Really which good. is like Xbox Game Pass, but for music. See that? It was... What are you marketing? Full what circle. is this? I uh, that thank you, Marty. Make sure you download doing. Spotify. <laughs> I seriously thought maybe Crackdown is in the middle of the sentence, so this person came up with this. I understand trivia the question. logic. Yeah. yeah. Well, like all, all, yeah, all of those, like the, the phrase "State of Decay" and Dead "Gears of Rising War" and, and "Crackdown" and "Dead yeah. Rising" were phrases before these video games. Yeah. yeah. Unlike Maybe Cuphead, which ain't a real thing, they created you, that. You shut your mouth, <laughs> okay? I don't trust uh, Lana anymore because I've changed my answer before and I've failed. <laughs> she, it turns you. out, yeah, she was trying to help you. He was, you, and you, you went with the reverse psychology angle. Now next time, you'll she'll you'll think she's helping you, but she'll be completely spinning you in the wrong direction. Yeah. that's that's how the game goes. Yeah, uh, if you want to participate. Send us an Xbox trivia question. Include four multiple choice answers and note the correct one in your email. And send it to me, please, at unlocked at IGN.com. Do a metal song next time. <laughs> <laughs> Alana, what are you up to on IGN? Where can we follow you and what you're up to, et cetera? I have a chest infection. Oh, so, great. Uh, great. I was out for the past I two days. I don't want to follow that. Yeah, it's not, it's not contagious. You have I have asthma, so I'll, <clears throat> as I know you do. Oh, yeah. Totally so, right. yeah, I'll, that'll knock me out for a while. If yeah, I it's were nothing to get great. That. But, yeah, I mean, I saw it this morning pretty fast. So, it's, uh, I don't know. Ask me tomorrow. I've got some features that I have planned that I just need to figure it out, really. <laughs> right now, I'm on drugs. Kotaku okay. already wrote one of them, though. Yeah, I really wanted to write that. Can we uh, send you well wishes on Twitter or some other form of social media? I am at Charalanazad. It's just my name in the middle of Charizard. We got it. Nailed two it. Two G's and two T's. That's not how that word works. You took you took that whole. Thing <laughs> Neither of those me. are in that. Marty, uh, you can follow me at Nick Biggity, uh, and I'm working. This isn't an Xbox thing, but I'm working on the Shadow of the Colossus remastered review, uh, which will be up uh, Tuesday morning. I really want to play that. I uh, was a. Uh, I just never played it. Played the original on. This on is the wait, best you never way. No, I uh, I got my PS2. A bit later in the cycle, I bought it for GTA 3 mm-hmm. and then just never played, yeah. just didn't play it. So uh, I've heard the legend. I've heard, you know, it's this brilliant thing that's wrapped in this horrible controls mm-hmm. and crappy frame rate and all this stuff. So yeah. 
if this turns out to be to fix those things and just have the great classic game underneath. The embargo I for the first half of the game is up, and I can say the first half of the game is the best way you could possibly play this game. Play and performance Excellent. mode. That's the one I'm going to do. Well, as in the first, it's the that best would, way to play the game. Wouldn't that imply, okay, just, yeah, is that a PS4 Pro really thing? Really? Yeah. I don't have a Pro. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just play it. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. I'll play it on a regular PS4. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Destin. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna try and do more of this series called How Scary Is This Year. I have a few that I have. How, How scary, scary is this? Twenty eighteen. Not gonna be scary in the twenty seventeen. I'll tell you that. The series is called How Scary <laughs> Is. Uh, I'm wrapping up filming on one right now. Lana's gonna be in it, and uh, oh, Marty's really? in it already. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I'm working on that. And of course, you know, you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Destin channel, YouTube.com. We should do How Scary Sees the Thieves. There's uh, skeletons in the game. Well, Ooh. I actually do hope that we can stream it sometime this week. Um, Which one? Do we have Sea of Thieves? We're streaming it now. Like, I mean, but uh, are we doing it all week, or is there a way that we can do it on the Unlock channel? We have a room. We have a room. Right. You can just w enter. And we'll have so to talk about show. it because there's a bunch of production needs. Uh, so figured out. Gotcha. Yeah. Hoping we can do that at some point. Yeah. yeah. Be good. If not, I'm sure we'll have an open beta <laughs> coming yeah. up. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm at DMC underscore Ryan. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Unfiltered's not yet. So. I don't know, whatever. Like else. how we're all just really stumped this week. Well, well it's, it's a lot going you know, on, but it's, it's, I don't mention any. It's all stuff you can't talk about yet. That's the thing. Well, it's yeah. all plan. It's all planning. Nothing's actually. I'm not actually posting anything. I can tell you what website the, yet. my whole team's working on, but like mostly it's me coordinating a lot of those. I did stuff. write an editorial yeah. that I posted over the weekend, but it's not Xbox. It's about. It's my perspective on Nintendo Labo from a. The perspective of a someone with a six year old kid. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that, Ryan. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, uh, that's unlocked episode, gosh, 330 already. So we shall return with another round of Xbox goodness for you next week. Bye, everybody.